all of us love our dogs. We love playing with them, spending time with them. We love their wet noses and their cuddles and how many smiles they bring into our lives. How many of us actually pause to think about the question, what do our dogs really want? Hi, I'm Rashi Naran from Heads Up for Tails and I believe what our dogs really want from us is respect and understanding. Respect for the wonderful species that they are and an understanding of what it takes to give them their best life in terms of training, grooming, nutrition, exercise and more. So let's get started. Most of the breeds that we have at home today were bred to be working dogs. So for example, a golden retriever was bred to retrieve fish, which is why they love water, they have a water repellent coat and also webbed feet. Same with the beagle. The beagle was bred to be able to track prey with hunters and therefore they're extremely intelligent, very energetic and have an amazing sense of smell. Each breed has their own unique abilities and we must as pet parents understand the purpose of the breed, why they were bred and therefore create a routine around that that will make them truly happy. So many times we label our dogs as naughty and as destructive but actually it's just that they don't have a channel to be able to exercise those unique abilities that they were bred for. Having shared my life with so many doggies through the years, I know for sure that no two personalities will be the same. For example, my dog Misara is very friendly, but she still has her preferences in terms of people, games, the food she likes and so much more. Some doggies will love to go to the dog park, others are comfortable only with humans and not dogs and I highly recommend that you take the time out to understand your pet's unique personality and the environment that they are comfortable with and really respect those choices. Dogs do speak, but they just don't use words like we know it. A renowned behaviorist named Toure Rugas came up with a series of more than 30 signals that dogs use to speak to both other dogs as well as humans. She calls these calming signals, and these include signs such as freezing, licking of the lips, turning of the head, and so much more. For example, a highly anxious dog may have their tail tucked in, may be panting heavily, and maybe pacing up and down. The context also matters. And learning to identify these calming signals can really help us understand how our dogs may be feeling in a given situation. Good health starts with a happy and balanced gut. The diet that you're giving your dog needs to depend on their lifestyle, their age, their breed, as well as specific health conditions that they may be facing. I found it very helpful to consult a vet or a canine nutritionist to help me create a diet plan that suits my dog and gives them the nutrition that they need to thrive. All dogs need some amount of exercise, but how much and what kind really depends on the individual dog. A dog that is well exercised is rarely destructive and destructive dogs are often just bored dogs. So in addition to walks, I do believe that adding some mental stimulation in the form of puzzles and games can help exercise our dog's mind and also strengthen the pet-parent bond. Daily grooming is an important part of a pet's life and having a dog with a clean and healthy coat makes them more comfortable, healthier and happier. Tick and flea preventive measures are also so important. I recommend using natural products which are much gentler on your pet's coat. Dogs have the mind of a two-year-old child and therefore taking the time out to really teach them what and what not they can or cannot do, where they should pee or poop, eat, sleep, etc. is so very important to keep them calm as well as happy. However, do remember that whatever you do, please do it kindly and with positive reinforcement. Pet parenting is not a precise science and I'm sure that all of us are doing the best that we can given the time and resources that we have. However, I do believe that just being more aware and more present in the time that we spend with our pets can go such a long way. I hope that today was just a small step forward in really helping all of us do better for these absolutely wonderful creatures. Thank you for listening.